moment of truth. Obviously, you can tell we're here at Copart this morning. We have not seen under the hood. We've seen pictures of the car. We got a good idea of it. Man, this thing is such a stud. It's such a good looking car. I think we're gonna be able to save the car, but can we save the motor and get this thing running? That is the real question. are gone that's why they didn't <laughs> so crusty yeah. this is bringing me comment vibes <laughs> yeah that, that this side didn't take near as much heat both fenders are really good the cowling's really good this hood is gone though you still got a nail head We'll have to mess with that more once we get back, but that should be a 401 cubic inch nail head. Make something like 325 horsepower, 425 foot pounds of torque. I think this is gonna be tough, because it's cooked. Let's see if we can get this thing running. How's it going? I'm Michael, this is Budget Builds, and we like to rescue burnt cars. So I was not exactly expecting to win this one we were just kind of watching it and my internet was freezing off. I was like, you know what? Maybe we should just throw a bid on this thing. It was 800. I did one bid, 825 and boom, we won it. So here it is. We won this car for $825. Obviously Copart fees. We walked out of there with uh, just over $1,200. But check this thing out. Honestly, a super, super sad day for somebody. This is a 38,000 original mile car. Seat's a little torn and tattered, but check this out. All original interior, power steering, power brakes, AC, cruise control, power seats, power windows. It looks like original paint, or most of it was at least. <laughs> Obviously they had all the windows down, the vents pulled out, so they were out cruising one day. When this thing lit up and sadly caught on fire. Obviously our first thing with this car, we need to get the hood up, see what we're even working with, and attempt to get this thing running. Went ahead and got the key pulled off of the column, and I was kind of afraid that we only had one key. Check that out. It actually works with the door, so hopefully this works with the trunk as well. I wanna at least see what we're working with back here. You hear, you hear that? Boom. Wow. So they were obviously working on some stuff back here. Huh, I wonder if a dealer had it. Air conditioning, headlights. Check that, oh, it's full. Presto and antifreeze. Look at how original this is. Look at that. Holy cow. I am so excited for this one, y'all. Cause I don't think that tire is uh, gonna do us any good. You can see where it actually blew up. That's nuts. Holy cow. It's a big car. And it's got a big drum. That's slick, thin. That's the as much motors we've seen digging in here. I'm ready to get that hood up. We don't want to destroy anything. Say the ball joints might be a little gone. Hose is intact. Not by much. What you think of that? Look at that. Look at the leg room. Man, this is nice. You're what, like five foot three or something? <laughs> Four too long, probably. <laughs> He's six foot, same as I am. Listen to this door, watch out. Look at that. Oh. Golly. Oh man. Hey, don't be smoking back here. <laughs> so tell us what you think. See this interior? The long wheelbase car, black. Was this like maybe a funeral home car? It gives me funeral home vibes. Like, what do you think? <laughs> Get it, you know, you get there? 
hang out to put a I know, which is probably good. This is where this car needs to be is up there, right over the 911, which probably ain't a bad thing because anytime you want to walk through there, you walk in between something in the 911, which I don't like doing. It needs to be up on the lift, honestly. But we've been driving it a bit and I got to dial in a few things on that car. We're working, we're replacing the alternator and stuff right now on it just to dial it in and really start enjoying it a bit more. And so it's down because we want to have fun with it. Now that we've got it in the shop, this is more or less emergency surgery. Paperwork and everything, it looks like this thing probably hasn't been sitting maybe a couple months, maybe a couple months. So we know water was probably blasted under here. Not only that, do you, but you have condensation from the heat and everything created. There's probably a lot of water in this motor. If it's not already toast, we need to get in there. We need to pickle everything. We need to get all the water out. We need to get fresh oil in and try to save it. We need to see if we can figure out how to get this hood up and off out of the way so we can start digging in. Okay, so this side's free. It's the side we need to focus on. There ain't nothing you can spray in there or anything. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can start spraying. That's so crazy. That's cool. That is so going up on the wall. Man alive. What are we getting into? We uh, <laughs> might need a carburetor. Oh, oh my goodness. Not bad. Now it's time to dig in and let's start getting some of this mess cleaned up. the original carburetor I just don't think this one's gonna um I don't think it's gonna work so gonna go ahead and pull it not only am I concerned it has some uh you know some, some maybe some bowl issues or something here there might be a little melted aluminum down in the intake there and we, we want to get this thing off of here make sure we're not completely packed full of how do I even get to the bolts? This is nuts. This is looks okay. I think we should make some carburetor jewelry. What do you think? That's crazy. Look how it burnt the oil off of it. Whew. Oh yeah, this side didn't catch on fire. <laughs> There's what it's supposed to look like. So it burned, it had flame on that side, I'd say. Not even tight. Beautiful. Not bad. That was a little oil foul, didn't it? Probably gonna want to do some valve stem seals. Nice. 
Eh. That's worse. Might have a blown head gasket. Maybe a little bit of signs of condensation there. Let's go ahead and soak this thing down. Not a lick of water down in there. Let's get it filled up though. Just to be safe. We know it's a little uh, extra dry anyways. Took just a second to pull the fan off of there, but I don't know about y'all. I'm ready to see if this engine spins over freely. Inch and an eighth. Oh, beautiful. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, brother's gas. Oh, okay. It's more than barbling. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the thing about fuel gasoline it burns and explodes in vapor form but right there as you can see we got a full tank of gas back there and it's still in there Whew, imagine if that had lit up this car would be gone but that's exciting we need to clean it up a bit more let's go ahead and drain this oil i think we might get this thing running Now our next step from the top side here is addressing our distributor because obviously we need that for the oil pump, which should be fine, but we need it for fire. This one you can see somebody had at some point in time taken the time and put a kit in here with a Hall Effect sensor, like a GM style, so you had an electronic ignition on the original distributor. The only thing I'm concerned with is how burnt and rusty everything is, so you're fl where it flings out or your fly out for your timing curve and everything is pretty crusty. Everything else is crusty. I'm afraid even if we got it to work, we'd have to completely rebuild it and we might have problems. I think our next easiest step, and it's pretty reasonable, is to just install a new electronic distributor. So this came with wires, coil, And of course our distributor and I opted to go with the external coil, no HEI goofiness or anything. I don't want a big, huge cap back there. So it's got a factory look to it, just a black cap and everything. Super straightforward, super simple. So let's go ahead and get our timing set on this thing. Let's get on our top dead center, compression stroke, number one cylinder, pull that old distributor and drop this new one in. On this engine, this is our number one cylinder. So what we're gonna be looking for is this to come all the way to the top with both our intake and exhaust valve closed. And we should see a timing mark. TDC here, you can see our timing mark. Now from underneath the car here, we obviously need to gain access to our starter. The wiring's just a little cook. We might have a little bit of water contamination. Not sure why. Man, this thing is nasty down here. I'd say that's just from everything cooking down. Obviously, we're just trying to get this thing running, but we're gonna pull the full drive train out of this car, completely reseal and repaint everything. Cause this one is getting the full restoration treatment.
any water and crud is gonna be right here at the bottom. Not bad. Which is how I thought. It did not look like this one had been sprayed down like crazy, like the comet had. You see our milky streak coming out right there. Now we just wanna get a majority of that out. Once this thing fires up to life, running it a bit, that'll evaporate out of there. starter doesn't look horrendous so I'm just gonna try to pull this cooked cable off we'll put some power to it and see if it'll work Filled up with oil. We have gone ahead and installed a positive cable as well as a signal wire for the solenoid and a ground. Let's go ahead and see if this thing will turn over on its own. We do have a slap full tank of gas in this thing. Now I'm not sure that the fuel pump will work, but if it does, we've got it pumped over here. So we're not getting a face full of gas because uh, we've done that before with a Comet that was very burnt and happened to have a full tank of gas. You ready? Baby. Oh yeah. And it's pumping gas. Starter sounds great. I don't want to wear it out. I'd love to see some oil start pumping, but I think we get spark plugs in it. Let's get our wires. Let's get everything timed. Let's figure out a carburetor situation and it might be time to see if this thing will fire off. Now that we're running electronic ignition, which I guess it probably kind of was with that stouter coil there, instead of running the factory 35 thousandths. <laughs> Crazy bird. <laughs> we'll go ahead and bump these up to 45. Go ahead and verify that we do have fire. So you just hook up your hot, your positive, and then your ground, which this will eventually get grounded to the block that'll be grounded to the battery. This thing should have a pretty stout pop. Oh, I hear it. We got compression now too. Feel it? A little bit. <laughs> Now, I don't think we want to reinstall this one. It uh, might give us some trouble. It might even catch on fire. We don't know why this thing actually burnt up. Now, you're not going to go just find a 4GC anywhere. That is a Rochester. It's not an extremely common carburetor. I think it was primarily used right here on a nail head. And they say you can't put anything else on there. I've got a Carter AFB, which is one of our favorite carburetors. This was from my good friend Clint. He gave us last time we were down in Florida and sits right on there. Uh, secondaries seem to function no problem. So I guess we'll give that one a stab. Carburetor on top, 
fuel running to it. We'll see how well that pumps through. It seemed like it was doing really good. Fresh oil in there, new spark plugs, an ignition system now. I think it's time we see if this thing will fire up. Wow, that is quite the fuel pump. gas. <laughs> there she goes! Our timing's close. Okay, uh, let's, let's measure our time on a smidge. <laughs> we are so close. And you can already see oil pumping up over there, which is a great sign. <laughs> I think... I think it got better. There she goes! <laughs> Oil pumping. <Woo -hoo. laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> there she is. What a sound. Woo. Very charred exhaust note. <laughs> Man, this thing's alive. That exhaust is horrible. Yeah, I hear it, right? We noticed holes in the exhaust and it sounds like it, but. How awesome. I think it's on fire again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a uh, not something not happy. Oh yeah. Choo choo. This thing stinks. It's burning off all that stuff, and it smells like a. Uh, fire extinguisher <sighs> stuff. Hopefully that stuff's okay for you. Well, it runs. Now we definitely need to get a little bit of run time out of it. Make sure the uh, valve train clears up and everything. Cooling system. We need a cooling system to do that. The only concern with the radiator is they're non-existent for one. We found some aluminum ones. You know how we feel about the fitment of aluminum. This one actually melted the solder out of the top. It's still there though, so I'm hoping maybe it's somewhat sealed. We do have coolant if you spin this in the engine. We're gonna go ahead and pull this thermostat. I'm sure it is all messed up just because the hose was melted all the way down to it. Let's get that out of there. Let's get a fresh gasket in it. 
get some belts on this thing and we'll try to put a little bit of coolant in it and see if this tank holds at all. Yeah, we keep absolutely everything, but you just never know when you might need it. <laughs> Can't forget to put a bypass on your heater hose. Well, I guess there was no heater hose left, but <laughs> where the heater hose would have been, almost hate to put antifreeze in it, just in case it leaks right back out. But it's too cold, if you can't tell, to not have antifreeze. It's leaking. We think we try to put a little bit of solder in it. At least try to slow it down. Was able to get a little bit here on that top neck as well. Let's fill it up and see if it holds it all. Uh. Looks okay to me. Top's holding, the bottom came up. We've got coolant in it. We've got, we can, we have circulation now. Let's go ahead and fire this thing up and run it a bit. Now what we're really trying to do here is obviously we're tearing everything out of this car, at least from the firewall forward. Anyways, we wanna make sure that the engine is mechanically sound. So we know we're just going through a good reseal, clean it up, paint it, and that we're not gonna have to get into it mechanically. <laughs> It's got a little knocky knock. What's crazy, it's got such good oil pressure. I mean, look at that thing, it's pumping strong. Well, we've definitely got some noise. Although we have really good oil pressure, everything seemed to be okay. There is just a, a little bit of a tappy tap. Somebody knocking on the door there. Hopefully something that we should be able to see, address, and take care of no problem. Maybe something affected by that heat came loose or something is down in that pan, and maybe it's not as big a deal as it sounds like it is. Should be pretty straightforward though. This engine needs to come out anyways, and it shouldn't be too bad to check everything over and give it a good refresh. But it is a runner. Even after burning up like that, it runs. It sounds pretty good other than 
our little uh, our little friend knocking on the door there above idle. Not a huge issue though, like I said. Now we're really in the stages of what I would call an emergency surgery, still not with the engine, but with the car now. We have some of this corrosion that is coming about from that heat. We need to get everything on the front of this car torn completely down so we can address this, we can get it cleaned up, we can get it treated, we can get it painted, because obviously the thought with this car is it is just so, so, so nice. Let's restore this thing to factory original from the front up. Really quick, let's take some time. All of the windows down with the wire cooked, we can't roll them up. So I'm not gonna douse this thing with water. Now this car obviously is actually really clean other than the dust. So we're not really marring up. It's not super filthy or anything. It's just really dusty from where it had been sitting. We actually, the original owner, the last owner, the previous owner, got in contact with us through Instagram. If you guys follow our Instagram, you see some video, you see videos and you've seen videos of this car put up on there. And he actually reached out and sent us pictures and everything of this car, which he said we could use and of when it burn up. And I figured with all the windows down, they were out cruising. Sure enough, they were cruising to a cars and coffee in the morning and this thing went up in flames. And uh, this, was, this was his baby. And so we're glad to be able to bring it back. Obviously gonna be some digging into, but I do wanna see what the car looks like so we can consider what to do more so with the front a bit here. And I'm just using some detailer spray like well, I said, this thing's not super, super, super filthy or anything. We're just giving it a good water-free, wipe down detail. So look at that original paint clean up. Wow.
Well, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. I really hope you all have enjoyed. You know, I wonder with that engine, maybe this thing was sitting here idling as it was burning and it burnt the oil out of it and just starved. Potentially, it did have some in there. Who knows? Maybe there's a piece of aluminum that fell that melted down in it. We'll tear into it. We'll figure it out in our next episode. We'll start ripping this thing apart. But if you all have enjoyed and you want to see more on this rescue and our other rescues and rebuilds, be sure to subscribe button notification bell to keep up with our future uploads. And if you have been a part of the channel, we appreciate it so incredibly much. We get to rescue all of these rides because of each and every one of you. So thank you so much. We're so excited for this new year. We have so much planned. We cannot wait to take all of you along with us. Peace out and catch you all on the flip side.